Okay, good. I'm going to say good afternoon because it's our afternoon. Other people around the world are going to be watching this at different times. But good afternoon, Jennifer. Welcome. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming online and for willing for being willing to share your story with the world uh, about what it means like to be a missionary. Uh, guys, this is telling the stories and here with all the stories of African and African American missionaries. Uh, we want those voices to be heard. We want uh, the younger generation to know that there are people of, of color like us who are actually having an impact around the world and we want more younger people to rise and many more missionaries to rise. So we trust that this story is going to bless you. Please like, subscribe and share this with someone else. So I'm going to first start by just saying, hey, welcome. And would you introduce yourself? Tell us a little about you. <laughs> Hello, I am Jennifer Ford. I am currently a cross-cultural witness for TMS Global, serving in Selma, Alabama, historic Selma, Alabama. And I am originally from Roxboro, North Carolina, and grew up as an Army brat and did short-term mission for quite a few years. And now I am doing my first long-term mission, finally. And I am actually excited and so thankful to God to finally allowing him to lead me to where I am now. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to let you explain two things. If you say TMS Global, those who are not part of a missions community in the U.S. will not understand that terminology. Yes. If you could explain what that is. And you, and then tell us, you said the historic Selma. Many people around the world don't know what that actually means. Yes. Yes. TMS Global is actually a sending organization. So they um, train, mobilize, and send. That's what the TMS stands for, train, mobilize, and send. So they're training individuals and mobilizing them to send them out into cross-cultural areas. So that's what TMS Global is, and we're around the world and stateside. So, yeah. Yes. And historic Selma, Alabama, Historic because Selma is known for its civil rights movement, the marches, the voting rights march, um, Bloody Sunday, unfortunately that happened on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Many may be familiar with that. And so Selma played a pivotal role in um, being one of the leaders of where the voting rights marches stem from. Um, so that is why it is known as historic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick question. Can you tell us a little how you received your call to missions? Wow. <laughs> that happened. Let me tell you, I first knew when I, I took my first short term mission trip to, um, the Yucatan in Mexico, and oh. I did not want to leave. And wow. I did my next trip to, um, it was a short term again, but it was stateside. Again, okay. just feeling connected to the people I met, feeling a connection to the people in the Yucatan, then um, just different trips I took to Mexico, not as not in the Yucatan, but different parts to the Navajo yeah. Nation, to Alaska, and just each time, just knowing there was something just still keeping me like wanting to mm. stay, not wanting to leave, like feeling like this is too soon, this is too early. I'm just you know making connections, and I'm a people yeah. person, and I didn't realize how connected I would be to, you know, such a, a unique culture. And, and I'm referring to every place I went, just, you know, not being yeah. so like, these aren't my people. <laughs> I'm just yes. coming to visit and serve and join alongside them. But it was like family everywhere I went. And I was like, wow, what's, what is this? And I knew. 
over time that I wanted to serve somewhere longer. And I made a connection in the Navajo Nation and oh, with wow. a family and I, and I just fell in love with the Navajo and I was like, this is where I want to come back and do long-term mission. Like, I want to come back here. And I just, I just thought for the longest it was going to be the Navajo Nation. That's where I was pursuing. There was other places. And it's crazy because a part of me still felt like a little guilty. It was like, I still want to serve my people. I feel like I should serve an African-American. I was a teacher. And, you know, I, I served in a lot of um, at-risk communities, fragile communities. Mm -hmm. And I love every place I taught or did um, youth development, extremely, just loved it a lot, but was still feeling pulled to go somewhere beyond where I was. I just was still there, talking to God often, like, where is it, God? I, I just feel like it. And I explored some opportunities on the on Navajo Nation, but there weren't any, they weren't good fits. And I, I wanted them to be, because that's where I knew I was supposed to be. I was like, this is where. And I remember, um, fast forward, before just before coming to Selma, uh, being upset and, and just fussing at God and saying, God, I don't know where I want to be. Everybody keeps saying, where would you go if you could be anywhere? And I was like, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I just know it's not further south, God. I know that. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah, that's what I told him. That's what I told him. I knew for sure. I said I would entertain Georgia if I stayed stateside. But um, uh -huh. so I was talking with my mission organization and we were talking and then they shared with me about an opportunity that was going on in Selma, like a team that was serving. And at the time, um, the, the mobilizer didn't tell me where it was. She just told me about the great things they were doing and everything lined up with who I am. And I was like, wow, where is this? And she said, Selma, Alabama. I was like, <laughs> I just looked up at God. Like, I looked up. I was like, we had this conversation, like, <laughs> and so yeah. I was like, well, I've always wanted to go to Selma for the historic value. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. In the back of my head, I was like, mm -hmm. there's no way. There's, I, God and I have this talk. <laughs> and so he knows he's supposed to listen to me, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway, I gave it a couple of days. I decided to come and do a vision trip. Sound okay. met the team driving back to the hotel and I was like something feels like right wow I got I was living in North Carolina at the time by the time I got back home it was like all these ideas like from the time I got to the hotel everything just started pouring out into my journal I couldn't, oh, wow. I could not turn this place off. Like, I felt like everything that was locked up inside of me, Velma, was mm -hmm. being unleashed for this place. It was like I was in the dark. Wow. And God just flipped the switch and it was like, oh my goodness. I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And I remember mm -hmm. going back to church, um, my church, and one of my friends said, hey, how did your trip go? And I said, I think I'm moving to Selma. And she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember saying, did I say that out loud? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I think I'm moving to Selma. And it, yeah. it was crazy because it was a piece. Like, mm -hmm. um, it was a piece. And so fast forward, I have been here a year and a half. I absolutely love it. I love awesome. the, the kids I work with um, and serve uh, their families. It's been an amazing experience. And let me tell you, I grew up in a small town in the South. Mm -hmm. And it was like God was taking me back. Oh, wow. So, um, he was like, trying to retrain me 
remodeled mm. me. He was really breaking me. But mm. at the same time, he was showing me everything that I've experienced throughout the course of my career, my um, time as a military brat. Yeah. Just everything as a parent was to prepare me for this place. Yeah. And I have really grown. I was like, wow, God had to bring me to Selma to really get my attention. And that's what wow. he said. That's what he said. Wow, that's you're talking. I'm just thinking of when the Bible says, My ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. Often we have this plan that we think this is the best way. Like we know the way, we have the solutions, we have and God is like, uh, oh, I wish you knew. <laughs> oh wow, that's awesome. He listens to us, but he was like, Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Like like I've been hearing recently, he he already knows what he has planned. Yes, and he's, he's he already knows what's on the other side, and uh, I'm like, yes. Nick, God knows, He knows what He has planned for me, and I'm impatiently trying. Lord, where am I supposed to be going? Where am I supposed to be going? It's not, it's not yeah. paying out. And it's like, because that's not where you're supposed to be going. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think if we remember that that He has everything, we're going to live more at peace daily and with an attitude of gratitude and not less complaining and less worrying and but yeah. i feel like humans want to be in control and so we want to have all the details and it's like you just follow me yeah yeah i mean it, it's crazy because it's like my relationship is getting closer to him wow. being in mission being mm -hmm. serving it's it's like, it's a new, it's like we have, I'm establishing a new relationship with him and wow. him to me. It, it, it's, it has not been comfortable. I have not always been smiling, Belma. <laughs> it has not all been rainbows and unicorns as they say. Yes. You know, but getting on the other side of the uncomfortableness and being in a place of comfort for this moment, because you know we're gonna go through those speed bumps, and yes, but yeah, it's like when I'm able to sit and think, that's like, wow, God, I I'm seeing it, I'm seeing wow. like I'm seeing His work. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, quick question. Yes. What would you say are the differences between a long-term and short-term missions for, from your experience? Oh, as I was explaining before, my short-term compared to long-term, my short-term was like just too short. I mean, mm. I am establishing relationships and hearing stories from the people I'm serving with and now I got to get on a plane and go back to my life. And I'm yeah. like, and it's, you know, it's, it's like leave, leaving family that you just met and yes. they've been away from you for a long time, or you've never met them. And now you finally are, you know, you're joined together and now you've got to leave them. It's like, what? You got to go so yeah. soon. I got to go so soon. <laughs> We're just starting to get to know each other. Yes. The short term is, is exactly that for me. You know, not everybody's going to have that experience. Um, but I, I know just being called into service this way, that's yeah. what it felt like for me. Long term has meant with me being here in Selma, Oh my goodness. It has meant getting to know people that I value and love mm -hmm. and just getting to know them, knowing just wow. with the comfort of knowing this is where God has wanted you to be. 
and yes. you've been trying to do other things and everything was to prepare you for where mm. you wanted you to be wow. and to be able to do it in a long-term way so you can really get to know your sisters and brothers that God wants you to be in alignment with and join alongside yeah. and support and to share yeah. your journey and your experiences because they are reflective of the ones you are serving. And, mm -hmm. and so that's the difference. I get emotional because this place carries a lot of emotion historically already. Yes. And it's reflective of my own upbringing from growing up in the South, but maybe not to the, the, um, the, the amount is not the word I'm searching for, but, but not to the degree that maybe some of the people who have, have experienced it here, but there are similarities, close, close yes. to related. And so, you know, when you're, when you're called to be where God wants you to be, and you finally get in alignment with where he wants you to be, it yeah. all makes sense of why he wants you to be honest with yourself when yeah. something is not where you're supposed to when you feel that the spirit telling you mm -hmm. something's not comfortable here and he's trying yeah. to, to move you but you keep trying to hold on and oh, i think this is <laughs> i'm gonna tell you i it's a, it's a blessing. It is a blessing mm -hmm. to be on the. It doesn't feel like work. You know, you wow. heard that. I, I, I love that statement. That? Say that again. It doesn't feel like work. It I doesn't love feel it. like work. That's when I you know you are in the center of God's will. Yes. Yes. I don't wow. know if you've ever heard people say when you do something you love, it, it doesn't feel like work. It yes. doesn't feel. And I don't know how to turn it off because that's how easy it is. That's how mm. comfortable it is. And not and not easy like everything's easy. Like I said, there, there yeah. have been many crying nights. And it's like there's joy in the morning. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But when you know that you know yeah. that you know that God, yes. you are where he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. is a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah, I did a faith okay. walk in my Amen. family. What? You're going where? <laughs> so it's like, it's crazy because I have a friend that would say, she was like, I don't worry about you because you always end up where you're supposed to be. And yeah. God always provides. And it doesn't feel like it when you're going through it, you know. It's just like, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> but if he, he, when you look back, oh, awesome. Yeah. So, oh man, that's precious. That is, you're talking. We just came back from a mission trip last night. I think I got home at almost one a.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some people that we met. I knew it's a, it was a state we went to Houston. And there's one of the ladies, you feel like you meet your sister that you had not known. And we were texting almost throughout the trip. And I was like, it's like, why do I have to leave her? <laughs> so I get the feeling, I'm, yes, I've done short-term missions. And there's some days I'm like, does it have to be short? Right. Can we just, can we just move? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I get, yes. yeah. I, I get that. I get that. And I feel like that's some of the things I, people don't understand that for short term missionaries, when you go and you come back, people from the outside won't understand why you remain connected to those people because that, oh, you just saw them for two weeks. It yeah. was just three months. They right. don't understand what happens, the thing that yeah. God does in the hearts and all the connection that's that happens. Right. And, but uh, I'm sorry, but that's, that's, that's the difference, Velma, because I think when you it when you are the one that's supposed to be doing that yeah it's a, the connection is there 
and everybody else who just goes, and I'm not judging anyone because everybody yep. has their place. So this is no judgment, no heat. Yes. Um, but it's hard to understand when that is your calling versus yeah. this is something I'm going to do for a moment because, you know, I this is what I feel I can do just for the moment, but not for a long yeah. time. <laughs> You know, and that's understandable. That's why we have yes. support, right? Because mm -hmm. there are those who can support what we're doing because of, you know, that's not them. So there's no yeah. judgment at all. But yeah. yeah, it's it's hard to explain sometimes. Yes, it is. It is. So tell us a little about the work you do. Oh boy, the work I do. My my mission is to um my ministry is to raise self esteem in young girls to exp um expose them to a variety of eclectic um, experiences so that they can embrace who they are so they can learn mm -hmm. to value their uniqueness and so nice. I how I build relationships in order to do that is through substitute teaching in the school, elementary school here. I oversee a garden that helps promote healthy eating. <laughs> and That's just good. Wellness, <laughs> yeah, and wellness over, in general, learning how to, you know, enjoy the the cultivating of, of a garden and, and seeing those, the, that hard work come to life yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. Um, also I coach a girls on the run program and girls on the run okay. is a national program, but we are currently the only girls on the run in Selma and oh, wow. we're getting ready to enter our fourth season. So we've had, we can accept 15 girls <laughs> each season. Okay. And so we're always at a full roster each se season with a waiting list. So oh, my, wow. My vision is that, you know, we'll have more of them mm -hmm. because it's a non-competitive program, but it, it doesn't just affect the girls, it, um, though it's the girls program, but it affects the, the, the children, the family members that are involved, the teachers that yeah. see our program, you know, yeah. just the different things that, you know, we're doing here is not just to affect the kids that I work with, but it's for the whole family. Because sometimes our parents haven't had those experiences. So now they're yeah. able to have those experiences with their children. And so mm -hmm. I join alongside the, the parents as well. I invite them in to, to be with, you know, a part of my ministry. So it's not about me, it's about, the, the work God is doing through me. So I'm really thankful. That's good. Awesome. Praise God. So what are some of the misconceptions about serving? And I'm, I'm, I'm a missionary, but I'm here in the U.S. So what are some of the misconceptions? Many people think, oh, you're no longer a missionary. Uh, I've had several people tell me that you're no longer, you're, like you disqualify yourself for being a missionary because I'm in the U.S. So what are some of the misconceptions about serving in the U.S. and serving overseas in Africa and Europe in Asia? A lot of times people don't see the need the same in the U S as they do overseas. And mm -hmm. we know living in the U S we have poverty, we have homelessness, we have violence, gun violence, domestic violence. We have, um, hunger, yeah. um, we have a lot of the things that overseas has right here in the U S yeah. but sometimes I think people think we have the accessibility to the resources a lot easier than those overseas. But there's a lot of places in the United States that people have not seen, have not gone to only read about in books. And yeah. Selma is one of those places that people have read about it through books, videos, documentaries, you know, um, news reports, 
But until you come and see for yourself in um, in places like Selma that, you know, are, this is a, a place that's 83% African-American majority of the community lives below the poverty line. And wow. there are, in such a small town of approximately 17,000 that have such a high crime rate that yeah. mirrors a large city like Chicago. And Whoa. I think our crime rate actually might be higher. Um, and so people think, well, you're in the U.S. This should be done. That should be done. This should be done. It doesn't happen like that just because you think something should be done. Yes. That's not how it happens. You have to respect how things are done wherever you serve and wherever mm. you serve and not just bring your, your, our mindset. I, I can't bring how things were done in Charlotte, North Carolina to some Alabama. It's not the same yeah. experience. And so it's respecting the culture here, the people here, um, yeah. and learning and, 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 and seeing, okay, where can I do my best serving here? You know, yeah. how can I help well here? Not just yeah. what I think they need, but what I know based on what I'm being told from my experiences with the children, with their uh -huh. parents, with, you know, people in the community. So, I th yeah, I think my misconceptions is that we don't need the help as much as they do overseas. And it's mm -hmm. sad because a lot of times I, I've gone overseas, I've gone in other places and been able to get the support raising a lot quicker. And I was like, what? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then... In other words, you know, it's like you can just work and do the same yeah. thing. But it's not. It's it's a missions is a different. It's yeah. it's its own type of work, and so trying to help people to understand that and and serving it and doing it well takes yeah. time. Yeah, and and thank you so much for saying that because I think. Uh, people think that cross-cultural is only when you leave from one country to the next country. But those, you're just you're coming from North Carolina. It's a different culture from uh, one the one in Selma. And so you have the same principles that work for international cross-cultural missions would work for that. You have to listen. You can't just come on like, well, we are all in America. Then let's do it. And yeah. then you, I think that's why some people fail because there's a tendency to think it's the same country. But then right. forget that the cultures are different, the people are different. And so I have to listen and learn and know exactly what are the needs, not just what I think the needs are to be able to eff effectively meet those needs and minister to people. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And you're, you're talking, there was a question that came up to my mind and I'm like trying to think about it. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's a question, actually, if it's just a comment, though. Because somehow I believe um, I really celebrate the work that the body of Christ in America has done with regards to missions in the previous years and, and decades and centuries, um, most um, likely. But I think what God is doing now is bringing the world to the U.S. And we will need more missionaries who are going to rise and be missionaries in the U.S. But then to... Because God is bringing the world here. And I think it's a lot more easier for us when God brings them here to minister to them than to take a flight to where they are. Because in many of, like in my in my city, we have people from close nations that they, they wouldn't have had an opportunity to hear the gospel. That I mm -hmm. think if we reach out to them here, they might be persecuted by family members, but it's nothing as severe as they would experience if they were back home. I have a kid, um, he's from um, a, a background that is not Christian, and he comes to our youth group. His parents don't all know, but and he calls himself Jesus boy, and he's growing and he's learning to know the Lord. But if he was in his, or if I went from a missions there, I might not have the same, the freedom that he has to come, just leave mm -hmm. school and come each day, he wouldn't have had that. 
And I think somehow the body of Christ has to start being intentional. How can we raise missionaries and send them back to our community here? Yes, still send people overseas, not as if in overseas is not important. There are some people who are going to be called to go, but there are also some people who are going to be called to go here where we are and just do the work of missions right here because we don't want to miss out and find ourselves where Europe is now, where we are trying to re-evangelize because the change was happening and the, the church wasn't intentional about reaching the community that was coming. So I think the body of Christ has to start being intentional. Okay, what can we do? What are the missionaries right. that are called called to do the work right here and support and make it easy for them to do that job? I think that's so important because just from my background, my my um, career um, experiences, working in youth development, um, and always like volunteering a lot in my the communities from which I lived. Um, and I I predominantly worked in fragile communities, African-American communities. And one of the things that I noticed early on and wanted to change or, or work on was volunteers coming in to serve in our at-risk communities at, which were predominantly African American, that did not reflect us. The volunteers mm-hmm. didn't reflect the people that they were serving. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I was like, "Wow!" I would see busloads come to my camps in the summertime, and they weren't African American. Like they weren't a busload of African American mm-hmm. adults or teenagers yeah. coming. They were sprinkled in, yeah. and. I th- I am thankful to those who came and volunteered. Yeah. But I want to see more of us serving us because yes. we need to see that. We need to yeah. see that we care for one another. We need mm-hmm. to come together. N- not that we just care about who we serve overseas that look like us. Mm-hmm. But we serve, like you said, right here in the U.S. in our own back door. Um, yeah. And so that that is important to me. That's why when I teach kids, I try to expose them to different cultures of the world mm-hmm. within the states and outside so that yeah. they can see um, and also help them acknowledge those who are serving you know, yeah. coming to care yeah. about them. But that's... So that's why a- you, yeah, I, I was just sorry, I was cutting you. Why do you think that we don't have many of those who look like us volunteering and serving? Is it a scarcity mindset? Is it just that it's not something that is promoted? Why is that? <sighs> That is the one of the most popular questions that <laughs> I mean, I had this conversation three years, almost two years ago with a with another organization I was serving with, and it was you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm always like, why is it? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think we. This is my thought. Only Jennifer. Is, <laughs> uh, and I have no, no research to back it up. So it's just yes. my thinking. So um, sometimes I think we are so busy with mm. doing a job that mm. volunteering is going to interfere with that. Yeah. Um, that's time I don't have. That's mm-hmm. time I could be with my family. Yeah. And that's not everybody. We're not talking to those that who are doing it. Obviously, we're talking about why we don't have a vast yeah. amount. Some people it's not their interest, you know. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. easier. I can I can financially support you, but I'm it, and also, it depends upon what avenue you're asking for. Yeah, that's true. Because 
That's if true. it's about children, not everybody, because I've I've worked with children a lot of times, so I'm going to speak from that standpoint yeah. that not everyone is a children loving <laughs> person <laughs> and can do them with a, on a small amount of time. Yes. And, but you talking about grow wider and they're like, eh. <laughs> so, and I'm, and I'm thinking for those people aren't the ones that are coming. Cause you definitely want people yes. in any role, the right people. Yeah. So but sometimes I think we put, you know, our work above service, mm-hmm. um, giving back. I'm not getting paid. So I don't know if I can really make time. I've experienced that on some of the things I volunteered on because they're like, that sounds like a paid gig. <laughs> that oh, sounds like something. Oh. And or are you being paid? You know, those would be the questions. I'm like, <laughs> something I love to do. So I do it. And, yeah. you know, so, you know, I think sometimes it's that. Um, we struggle as a people sometimes with balancing a lot of things as it is. Yeah. And sometimes that seems like one more thing to our plate oh where do I put that on the priority list you know yeah and it's unfortunate because as I'm talking to you and since I've been talking to you I start looking I don't know why self-worth and value are the two things that are coming to my mind right now oh wow we are valuable people. Yeah. And we have, we need to value our self worth. But do we not think we're valuable enough to support our own people? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, yes, yes. I don't want someone else to see me more valuable than my own people see me. Yes. So it's like, when I'm teaching and I'm like, I want you to do well. Yeah. But I don't want to want it more than you want it. Yeah. I want you to want it just as much, but as, but more. Yeah. So for some reason, I felt that come into my mind earlier. You were saying something and that came to my mind. And so it came again and it makes me think, how valuable do we think we are as a people mm-hmm. that we don't we don't see ourselves valuable enough to you know come alongside yeah. and join and support yeah. mentor and yeah. like you said in our own communities you know yeah. I mean just where you live yes you can go across town. And live cross culturally different. Yes, <laughs> you really can. If we would stop, like right now, my I'm trying to listen more. So if I'm not doing well right now, <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> I'm I'm working through it. <laughs> but yes, we sometimes we need to go somewhere and just listen. Hmm. What's being said? Yeah. Don't go trying to. Hey, I got this for you. I think this would be great. Oh, she looks like she needs this. Just go, just go and be there. Be yeah. present. Mm-hmm. And as I'm saying this to you, uh, these this is for me. Yeah. This is for me because there are times with my students. I just I, I've written in my journal. Miss Ford, you need to be quiet. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to be quiet. Miss Ford, you just that's, need to be quiet. That's a good reminder for me to sometimes, yes. You know, because it's like something else is happening. But sometimes our ideas, our thoughts block mm. it. We miss moments. Yeah. Sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. 
Wow. Oh my, that looks like a good note to conclude with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'm going if somebody wants to contact you, uh, because there are times when people watch these videos, they're like, I would like to get in touch with her. Maybe she might help me and give me counsel. Or someone wants to support the work you're doing. How can they get in touch with you? How can they support what you're doing? Wonderful. Yes. They can reach out to me on Facebook, Jennifer okay. Ford on Facebook. They can also email me at J Ford okay. at TMS. That's TMS dot org. Oh, okay. TMS global dot org. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so J Ford TMS global dot org. Okay. They can also reach me by phone. Okay. Did I put my phone number out there? <laughs> Maybe I should I would, just put my email. I would say, out yeah, there. just your email on Facebook yeah, should I'll be good. I'll just put my email out there. <laughs> you might yeah, get a thousand calls. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes we need that thousand. <laughs> oh Lord. The army is coming. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. So um they can also I have two emails and they can also reach me by by Jen Marie. 50 at gmail so that's j e n n marie m a r i e 50 at gmail so those two emails okay are we guys i'm going to put all of that in the description below so just check the description and you'll see that yes okay. yes yeah. so Thank any last you, words oh if you are african american or african descent and you are just thinking about what it would be like to serve somewhere stateside, please reach out to me. Please reach out to Velma. Yeah. If you're looking for overseas, please reach out to me. Please re reach out to Velma. We would be more than glad yeah. to talk with you and connect you with the people that can help you um, have that experience yeah. to just go and see, yeah. to do a vision trip, to see what it's like. And as always, you are welcome to come to Selma anytime. Yes. We would love to have you. My kids would love to love on you and the community would too. And Selma is beautiful. I think I've been there about twice when I was on campus. I came a few times and it's, it's a beautiful place. I mean, just the history and all of that. So. There's a lot of history in Alabama as a whole and Selma especially. So there's a, a lot of jewels here. Mm -hmm. So, and we're just praying God continually restores Amen. and renews. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much, Jennifer, this afternoon for sharing your story with us. Guys, uh, oh. thank you for watching this. God bless you. If it bless you, share it with someone else. Tell someone who looks like you and I, like Jennifer and I, uh, let them know, share it, this with them and let it inspire them also. Okay, that's right. going to be the end for today. God bless you guys. Bye. Bye.